Should you apply for BTO, an EC or consider other options for your first property? Hi everyone, this is Kenny from Propedia. This channel is created to share in-depth research for projects across Singapore. If you are weighing your options for your first property and wondering which is the best one, then this episode is just for you. Before we proceed with any comparison, the first thing we need to find out is your loan amount. If you are applying for HDB and eligible for HLE, go apply for it. At the same time, apply for an in-principal approval from the bank to give yourself more options. Today, we'll be comparing between BTOs ECs and private property as our first property options because this is what I've witnessed from many and they are stuck because they have too many choices. First, let's take a look at a BTO project called Get Home Mirage. Given that prices for 4 room units started from $243,000 without grant back in 2012, units on average could be selling at $270,000. Fast forward to 2021, 4 rooms are selling at an average of $540,000 giving us potentially $270,000 profit for most units. In fact, most people call it the first port of gold mainly because they were lucky in getting a ballot number and sold it for a huge profit once their unit hits MOP. Next, let's take a look at a new launch EC in Chonshukang, the Rainforest. First launched in early 2012, TOP in March 2015 and MOP in March 2020. Say you bought a unit at 1152 square feet, averaging at $850,000 during launch, and sold it off in 2020. We should see an average profit of $300,000. At this point of time, some of you may be thinking that the profits from EC is almost similar to BTO. Is there still a point to purchase an EC? When we compare BTO and EC, we must understand that these two options have their own pros and cons. BTOs are very difficult to ballot for, with families trying a lot of times and yet still failing to get it. Let's face it, if anyone does get a ballot, and even if the available choices aren't the best, there is a high chance that they will still buy it. And lastly, certain BTO projects are facing construction delays and thus pushing our MOP dates even further. That said, is BTO really that bad? No, it isn't. One thing for sure, BTOs are the cheapest option available despite their cons. As compared to an EC, the risk is much lesser. On the other hand, can we get higher profits for an EC? Yes, we can. But today, I'm not going to run through in detail on it. You may want to check out my other videos on EC and unit selection in my channel. If you are still unsure if you should own a BTO or an EC, do drop me a message to understand more. Lastly, if you are given a choice to own a private condo as your first property, should you do it? Let's take a look at a project in Pongo, Watertown, TOP in 2017. Unit was bought in 2012 and sold for $244,000 profit in 2017. Next, you went ahead to purchase a unit along East Coast. Seaside Residences, TOP in 2021. Unit was bought in 2017 and sold for $438,000 profit in 2021. Private property is a very different ball game because it has lesser restrictions and often a better choice for those who are not eligible for BTO or EC and do not have an MOP to fulfill. Given the time frame from 2012 to 2021, we have a good 10 years to work with and we are able to buy and sell private property at least twice within the 10 years and possibly purchase at the time. As you have seen, there's a possibility to bag a profit of $682,000 given this scenario. But I'm not trying to say that we should buy private property because of this. What I'm trying to show is the flexibility it provides to purchase in any location and we are able to sell it within 3 to 4 years after the purchase. After all, everyone's situation is different. Some of us are working with a certain budget, while others are looking at a fixed location to purchase. Some may be purchasing for an immediate place to stay, and here's something I wish to share with you. Let's take a look at the resale HDB nearby Kek Hong area, Block 252 Chojukang. Imagine you bought a unit there back in 2012 for say $430,000 and decided to hold it till 2021 when the market is at a high. You are essentially selling at around the same price you bought 10 years ago. In fact, if we compare it with the BTO example, we can see a drastic difference despite these two examples being located around the same area and bought in the same year. However, I'm not trying to show that buying a resale HDB will definitely make a loss. Instead, what I want to share with you is the timing of our entry. 
If you look back at the transactions, resale HDBs of Block 252 that were sold from 2015 onwards will likely see a small profit after MOP. In summary, we must be very careful in selecting our first property as we may be locked into a property for the next 3 years or even up to 10 years before we can sell it. Therefore, I urge every aspiring first property owners to be very sure of what you're capable of and what you really want. Like what I've told my client recently during his first property purchase, don't hesitate to make the right move because time is essence in the property cycle. That's all for my first property analysis. If you need a thorough analysis like how I did for my other clients, do drop me a message. And if you find my videos insightful, do smash the like and subscribe button and I'll see you soon.